The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Southwest Ag Conference SWAC. I'm down at the University of Guelph's Ridgetown campus, catching up with Josh Nasalski, University of Guelph. How's it going, sir? Great. Thanks for having me. Hey, and uh, you just did a great presentation. You, uh, you know, you do a lot of research uh, on nitrogen and nitrogen management, mm -hmm. um, and you were going to talk nitrogen nuggets, nitrogen knowledge nuggets that you've uh, shared with the audience today. And we want to focus on, you know, um, crop burn mm -hmm. impact there and palatization. Let's start with leaf burn. Um, you know, the first question you had was, you know, top dressing. You know, is there a yield loss when it comes to crop burn? Uh, there can be, we'll talk about that in a moment, but one of the rules of thumb is that the later in the season you're top dressing, if there is a yield hit, it's going to be much higher than if you're top dressing earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason is uh, if you're top dressing later, you're going to be burning those leaves in the upper canopy that during grain fill should be intercepting sunlight. And so they're not because they're burned, so mm -hmm. you'll be losing yield. If you're top dressing before V5, T6, if you get leaf burn, uh, those leaves are shaded anyway by grain fill, right? By right. silking. So even if they're burned, it's not that big a deal because they'd be shaded anyway. Mm. What about the leaf wetness? Now, does that impact? Does that protect yeah. the leaf? Yeah, great question. Because some, you know, some farmers will say, well, if I apply early in the morning when there's dew, maybe that'll reduce the risk of burn. There was one study uh, in Brazil that actually tested this, where they used backpack sp sprayers to wet leaves mm. uh, before top dressing urea at V5 and V10. And they found no significant difference, no real difference in leaf burn or yield hit. Dry leaves or their wet leaf, wet leaves. Mm. So, well, let's talk about urea. What happens if we get some, you know, some nitrogen in that mm. form down in the world? Yeah, yeah. So another another thing I, I, I talked about was uh, leaf burn is a kind of nitrogen loss pathway, especially with urea. If it's intercepted by that canopy, it lands on the leaves, or it's in that whirl. Uh, most of it is lost. There was a study that done that showed that 93% of that urea intercepted by the canopy was volatilized, right? Because urea, if, even if it's on the leaf, can be lost as ammonia. Right. Let's talk about using inhibitors here. I mean, more and more growers are using inhibitors. Mm -hmm. Does that protect, or mm -hmm. is there any impact there from that perspective on leaf burn? Yeah, so the, the research shows that using uh, an inhibitor uh, when you're top dressing increases yield because there's just less volatilization loss. And the question is, well, will I increase leaf burn? Because that's a bad thing. Uh, one study did a head to head comparison of uh, NBPT, which is the active inagritine, right. versus just straight up urea. No difference in leaf burn. Uh, well replicated study. I can't speak to other active ingredients. There's many others that would be nitrogen stabilizers, but at least the active inagritine. No, no, no increase or decrease in leaf burn potential. Mm -hmm. Another question, Josh, and that is, you know, when do you start losing yield? You know, what level of damage do you start losing bushes? Yeah, so that's a question we wanted to answer. Uh, regardless of if you're using your UAN or urea or with and without an inhibitor or the rate, we want to know at what point, at how much canopy do you have to burn to lose yield potential? And this was a study done uh, to figure that out by Gavin Brady, a master's student. This was done at Ridgetown Allura Winchester Research Stations across Ontario, where very briefly, Gavin applied different rates of nitrogen, uh, as urea or UAN, into, uh, into the whirl. And uh, then he measured on from the V9 to V15 leaf, counting from the bottom, uh, on each leaf, the percent leaf damage. And he looked at like 6,000 leaves, I think it was something like that. It was a lot, right? A lot of work, so, so good on you, Gavin. And what we found out is once those upper leaves, the average leaf burn just on the leaf area exceeds 6% on average, you start losing yield potential, right? Regardless if you're using urea or UAN. Um, now there's a confidence interval there, right? Four to 9%, so, you know, I'm saying 6%, but it's around that number. You start losing for every additional um, percent leaf burn, you lose 1% yield potential. So once you get to 7% canopy burn, you lose 1% of your yield potential, right. if that makes sense. Uh, so, so, you know, that's, that's quite a big number. Like, that, you don't need a whole lot of leaf burn to start losing yield. Now, here's the kicker. We purposely burned those leaves in the upper canopy, right? We were targeting the ear leaf, especially. The, you know, the 12th leaf is generally the ear leaf in Ontario. If you're top dressing at V6, V7, V8, you're probably not going to hit those upper leaves. Right. But, but the, for those upper leaves, that's the number we came up yeah. with. But overall, I mean, it really is a, does make a case for... A 
you know, uh, Y drops in a sense, right? Doesn't it? Yeah, it, it makes it it makes a case for um, really just trying to pay attention yeah. to to leaf burn. Uh, and trying to minimize that. I, I will say though, with urea, we, we very rarely, we did sometimes, but rarely got uh, yield reduction from the leaf burn, just because it never exceeded um, that you know, 6%, 9%. Um, the only exception, and I know you're, we want to talk about weather, the only exception where we saw significant yield reductions with urea was at Ridgetown. Ah. And what is it about Ridgetown that was different than the other locations, weather? Primarily, yeah. it was drier, right? It was the driest, yeah. had the highest average temperature, and the highest relative humidity during this period between application and our, our damage ratings. So between the top dress and when we actually assessed leaf um, leaf burn. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in those conditions, you can even with urea, it is safer than UAN. Uh, even with urea, you can get leaf, you can get a yield reduction uh, just based on that burn exceeding that, you know, six percent. Um, so it does make a case for, you know, below canopy applications if it, if possible. But urea is, um, it, it is much safer. And in two out of the three locations, we saw no yield reduction uh, or sign anything with the top dressing urea. Josh, your final nitrogen knowledge nugget, and that's about CEC yep. soil levels. Um, um, higher levels, do we get lower risk of lateralization? Yeah. Yes, we do. So that's the, the last nitrogen, nitrogen nugget in the uh, presentation, which was uh, based on this analysis, uh, we did a large trial, which I won't describe, but we had 15 site years, lots of soil, weather, well, soil data, weather data, crop data. We found that once soil CC was greater than 25 MEQs per uh, 100 grams, our risk of volatilization was much, much lower, right? So even in conditions where we expect really high losses, right? Using urea, surface applied, no inhibitor uh, onto wet soils. If that CEC was 25 or uh, greater than 25, uh, much lower than expected. And uh, uh, it's not like as CEC goes up, your risk goes down. It's like a break point, 25 and higher. It wasn't like 20, it wasn't like 21 and 15 were very different. It was 25 or greater. We had a big reduction. And I was nervous to stick my head out with that nugget because that's a number and there's a lot of you know heavy hitters uh, at the conference. Uh, but I did find another study that supported this 25 CEC as a kind of a cutoff to help you figure out is this a high risk or low risk field. Well, some great nitrogen knowledge nuggets from Josh Nasalski. Thank you, sir. Great to see you at SWAC. Thanks, thanks for stopping by. Always a pleasure, Bruno. Thank you.